you a bet to be going on the time, I said. Something about that one right there. Well, he's done for me. I can tell him he's done for me, man. I can tell him. I can tell him half a year all day, but I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm a living testimony, a walking testimony. Come on, boy. God. Come on. His mercy, his grace, his joy is for all generations. He got Sarah listed out with me, so I thank you, God, for it. I thank you for it. Go ahead. Oh, man. Come on, Lord. Fill this place this morning, Lord. Fill it, Lord. Fill it. I am just but a child in your immaculate plan. I am an open vessel waiting to be used, so fill me, Lord. Oh. We have a special presentation by one of our very own youth. Uh, this young lady is a part of Warrensville Heights Bank, and she is seven years old. Go ahead. Down the block, down the block. Cool to be the church, me too. We got to know that there's still good things coming out of the school system. So this young lady, Sister Robin Higby, we have seen her born and raised serving and she is going to give us a musical selection in her very own way this morning. Matthew 18, 3, we're going to litter this whole service this morning with scripture and text to help build these youth. Matthew, Matthew 18, 3 says, and he says, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter into heaven. So let's take that message as she prepares herself to come, because we must become as little children. What does that mean to be a child? Don't be offended if somebody calls you a child because every new atmosphere you find yourself in, you are going to have to become what? A child. You are going to have to learn, you are going to have to study, and you are going to have to grow in order to become that which God has for you to be. Amen. So children are open vessels, and as this open vessel comes in her own way, because normally we would have the choir or somebody else presenting a musical selection, but today she's going to come in her own way to uplift the Lord. So let's celebrate this child and she comes and brings what she has for us. Yeah. 
room or if y'all know the small doors go away into the big room. This may be the first auditorium that you may play in, but you know, I speak great this over everybody too. Over all the people. Yep, yep, so we got that take away. Reverend Walter, and give it up for Sister Rodman one more time. Rhonda! I remember, I remember reaching my hand through that glass window at Rainbow's Baby and Children, and she was about this big, and I had her in my hand, and I prayed for her at her birth, and look at her now. Hallelujah. We have a young people with us for a two-minute word to the youth, two-minute word to the youth. I'm for young folk, and whenever they're trying to do things, I'm always pushing and supporting and uh, looking at this area, and the 131st area we all love, and we all appreciate uh, the Mount Pleasant area. We need leadership that matters. I don't endorse anyone, but I let folk who I believe in have a moment and a spot, but this young man has a ministry and he has a voice. I want to thank him for the many masks and the, the hand sanitizers that are in the bags he gave us. And uh, he's a young hero. I know his family, the Bolden family. Come on, Brother Azel, Bolden, and just tell us who you are. And uh, we're not campaigning, but I can tell you he's running for the councilman to take over Johnson's spot. But he's a young man on fire. And whenever we get together, we can't help but have church. Another one of my nephews in the Lord. Come on, listen. Amen, amen. Bless Pastor Jones. Would you, would you please bless Pastor Jones? Now, would you bless the name of the Lord with me in this house? I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because there's some things that change um, But as he said, I did come to... Uh, inform the community that I am running for uh, community office in Cleveland City Council Ward 2 uh, where my father Tyrone Bowden used to be a councilman there. Uh, my mom is Lucretia Bowden. Many of you know her from singing um, in the churches. Uh, but there is some things that have to change and um, as many politicians come and speak, uh, we have been bought in so long enough. And they come and speak and take our votes and they sell them off. Uh, but we have to understand that unless God's plan is in position, that there won't be some things that change. And what I understand more about our community is that there are some things that have to be fixed. Um, there are some roads that need to be fixed. There are some assessments um, that need to be done to our community um, to make sure that we're not just paying for demolition. Demolition is not a return on an investment. We have to make sure that they are putting money back into our communities because we are losing our oh, yeah. But aside from that, we have a bigger issue at hand. And that issue is the spiritual warfare in our communities. And when we understand the spiritual warfare in our communities, and we understand that we wrestle not in flesh and blood, but against this war, I um, mean, these spiritual uh, darkness and these wars, I um, mean, these spiritual places to where these principalities and high places have us in the position and we're warring in the flesh and we see people loosely killing each other when we see babies being handled so loosely but it's because people don't understand that we're fighting this fight in the wrong war and we have to put the spiritual warfare back into place so that we can start to see some of these things start to go down because once we get God's plan in position and we understand that Jesus didn't go for crucifixion we can understand some things in a different way and like I said, not as usual, I'm right. um, coming with this plan to where I understand we have to assess these homes because they're putting a ton of money into demolition, but until we get them to put money back, we're losing on our, on our investment. And from there, we'll be able to teach trade and put money into the community to teach our youth different things so where they can understand that they are a product of the environment and they can be an assessment and somebody that we can use in our environment as well. But like I said, um, at the end of this, remember, that we have a bigger issue at hand. And the bigger issue is the spiritual warfare in our communities that we are losing. Thank you. Bless you, bless you. Yeah. Bless you. Thanks for that, brother. Thank you. We need to hear more of that from political platforms. Um, because this community is something that we do value. And to value this community means we value the people. And as Apostle Paul tells us that that is the fulfillment of Christ's message, 
and how we do for the people. It, it is the parable of the, of the sheep and the goat where Christ tells the people, he says, listen, the people actually ask Christ, they said, how did we know when we were serving you? Yeah. How did we know when we were worshiping you? Yeah. Well, you knew that because did you see about the sick? Yeah. Did you see about the imprisoned? Did you see about the poor and the destitute, the widow? Christ had a message for the people that if we are going to be leaders in the, in the community, the ultimate way of leadership is what we can do All right. for the people. Yeah. All right? So we thank you, brother, for that message. Um, we will look to your, your campaign, and, and we look to support all those who are going to do the best they can, especially on the foundation of Christ. So we thank you for that, brother. We thank you for that. We are here at this moment of the service where, where it's a part where we can all just come and be a part of because of COVID. We are going to stay where we are. We're not going to ask anybody to come to the altar this morning. But we're going to have Reverend Williams come in his own way that he may be filled with the Spirit to take us to the throne of grace this morning. Because you are the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. 
You're a just God. You have all power in your hands. You created the heavens and the earth. And we give you praise and glory. We thank you for the fact that you've given your son. And your son has given his life for our sins, Heavenly Father. It was nothing that we didn't deserve. But you give it to us, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for that gift, dear God. We ask that you continue to bless our lives. Bless our families. Bless us generations to come. Bless each and every one in this sanctuary. Yeah. Bless our pastor. Bless our teachers. Yeah. Bless our trustees, Lord. Dear Father, but bless grace as a whole, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. We praise your name and give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done on Calvary, dear God. We praise right now. We thank you for the blood, dear Father. The, the blood, blood that washed all sins away, dear God. We give you glory. We lift up, dear God, and we just want to thank you. All the blessings we have in Jesus' name, we pray. took their time to prepare a presentation for you. Okay. So we are going to allow them their moment to honor you. And while they are preparing themselves, uh, just a couple kind words on Pastor Jones, because Pastor Jones does do a lot for this church. Amen. And in 18 years of service to Grace Missionary Baptist Church, he's got only added that to the 30 years of preaching that he has stood on the Lord's side. So we thank you for that, Pastor Jones. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing. Understanding that he cannot be in every place at all times. It is our it is our due service to, you know, help him, uplift him, yeah, and uplift yeah, 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 yeah. So we thank you for what you need to bring this man back to church, Pastor Jones. I sat in the hospital and they were taking me to dialysis. And Pastor Jones made his way to Learner Tower during the COVID. And I was not able to see Pastor Jones. Pastor Jones left me a car and a very nice message. And just understanding that he would come down just to see about me. Yeah. And I mean, he make all my functions, so get it together, church. He's not going to make everything that we do. But Pastor Amen. Jones takes his time and yes, he's fine. He yes, so make sure that we stand behind him, uplift him, and encourage him. Thank you for your service, Pastor Jones. Give him a hand to you this time and make honor, Pastor Jones. There is so much you can say about Pastor Jones. There's not enough words in the Bible or dictionary that um, you can say about him. But for me, on my behalf, he has been there for me and my family. Again, like I said, he testified multiple times to you guys. He was there when Robin was in the hospital. Nobody was allowed to see her. He was the first human besides the doctors that laid hands on my child in a prayerful way. And it was so funny. I had stepped out because I was just there all the time. And I stepped away, and the nurses there, they said, you know what, Miss Higby? It was this nice, tall gentleman. He came up into the hospital. We prayed and we sang. And he left a card on Robin's incubator. I said, now, who could that be? that left a card on my child's incubator, none other than Pastor John. So you do so much for each one of us. Like I said, there's not enough words I can say about you, Pastor John. Even showed up to my mother-in-law's service. She was not a member of grace, but she came here all the time when my daughter was doing different things. And he was right there for me and my family. We definitely appreciate you. The youth of grace, if you're a youth of grace, I don't care if you're 45, please stand up. 
All my youth in the building that can hear me in this room, please stand up. Name, if I got name, name, come on. Let's stand up, let's stand up. You, you, you. Miss Robin, I need you to stand up, please. Autumn, love, love Christopher, your love brother. Yes, okay. All right. This is the behalf of the youth of grace. We greatly appreciate you keep doing what you're doing. You and Sister Jones, because I know without a spouse, it's kind of hard, and I know Pastor Jones has to have her with him. So we appreciate you too, Sister Jones. This card is for you, Pastor. This is from you. And this is for you, Sister Jones. We greatly appreciate all that you do for us. We love it like you do. We love you do. Thank you. Give it up for Reverend Walker, Reverend Antoine, Reverend Edward. Camille Cone from LA. Come here, Camille. Stand up. Stand up. Let us see you. Amen. Come on, Brother Tyler. I, I, I call Tyler because he looks like money today. Amen. He's going to hold this basket. Basket has never been used yet. So y'all going to use this one basket. And all the young people are going to come first and bring a gift. It's not what you have. It's the fact that you give to the Lord. And the Lord will bless you. How many of you know you're blessed because you give? I know I'm blessed because I give. And I give because I'm blessed. Amen. And so our young people are going to come first, Brother Tyler. Look at this graduate. Look at him. Give it up for Brother Tyler. He's going to hold this basket. And he's going to receive the offering today. He's going to ask that the Lord will bless us before we give. And then we're going to follow suit. And we want all of our young people, if you're sitting next to your mom, dad, uncle, sister, brother, and you don't have a gift, lean over and tell them, give me something because I want to give today. Amen. I want to give today. Amen. 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 We know that God's been good to us and we want to be good to the Lord. Come on, Brother Ty. birthday to Sister Creasy Hunter today. Happy birthday, Sister Creasy Hunter. Amen. We have some more birthdays. We have some belated birthdays. Thank you, young people, for the flowers and the cards. We love you. Thank you. We love you. We love you. As you walk by your neighbor, tell them I love you. 
They can hear you under the mask. I love you. I love you.
And then so I really had to focus on myself for a minute and I just really had to think to myself where I'm gonna be at and where do I wanna be in life. So I had to really focus on my goals. Um, just trust the process and uh, believe that you can do it. God won't put you through anything that you can't handle. Um, I am not introducing our, our speaker for today. Uh, class of 2021 graduate of Cleveland State University. Y'all was getting pictures with eagles on the bottom. 
But as I read more about eagles, I was interested in how amazing they are. They are admired for their ability to soar to heights. They are very intelligent and powerful. Eagles are known for their strength and courage in even the most dangerous storms. They know when a storm is approaching long before it happens, and when the storm sets, the eagle sets its wings so that their wings will lift them above the storm. In our lives, sometimes we have these storms that rage as well. Though we cannot always escape these storms, we can use these storms to lift us higher as we set our minds towards God. As I was studying, I was amazed by how many Bible verses mention the wings of eagles. In Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 4, Moses counts climbed to Mount Sinai, and the Lord called to him. God reminded Moses what he did to the Egyptians and how he carried him out on eagle's wings and brought him to himself. I found this amazing because it reminds us that God will carry his people. Yes. 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 As a recent graduate of Cleveland State, I can tell you there were times when I was going through school and I felt overwhelmed with difficulties as well as fear. There have been times when I relied on myself and eventually I discovered my strength is insufficient, but through God, I have everything I need. Four years ago, I remember starting at Ohio University, and I was scared for the journey ahead of my life. As time went on, I still loved OU, but I was struggling with math. Math is something I've always struggled with. I remember one night I called my grandma, and I was telling her how I was thinking about coming home to go to Cleveland State. She told me that she would support whatever I do, but to pray about it. I remember that as I prayed for it, I didn't want to leave my friends. Honestly, I loved my life at OU, but I felt I had tried everything. I had tried tutors, office hours, staying up late, and studying, but truly, I can tell you that the power of prayer, none of was the step that I took that helped me get better. I put my faith in him, and he kept his promise to me. It was because I did that that he brought me through. As I waited for him, honestly, it felt like forever. And sometimes I was unsure if my prayers would be answered. But remember that when you ask God, he will answer your prayers in his time and not yours. Remember that when you choose to wait on him, it does not mean you will get everything you want. But when you wait on him, you are allowing him to come in your life and take charge. Trust in his plan because it may be different than your original plan, but he will give you everything that you need. As I wrote in Cleveland State, I passed my first two math classes pretty easily. But in my last semester, I was discouraged. I was taking statistics, and the concepts were pretty hard to grasp. I don't know if y'all have heard about the T-score and the Z-score and all these tables and everything, but still, I prayed, I studied, and I trusted God. My biggest goal in college as a first-generation student was to graduate in four years. After transferring, I remember I was discouraged being behind after failing math at OU. I began taking 18 credit hours instead of 15 to graduate by my expected graduation day. You, as you go through school, whether it's elementary, middle school, high school, or college, or you may even decide to do a trade, remember that in life you will hit road bumps that will stretch you out. These difficulties in life may not come from academics at all, as mine did, but many other things. You can endure things such as bullying, depression, anxiety, anything else that you have going on, Remember that these things can overwhelm even the strongest people. Always remember to rely on God as you go through these storms of life because he will keep every promise he has made you. God is faithful and true to his word. You may go through life and wonder why your strength is not being renewed. You may feel like there's always a problem and you may become tired. Remember that strength is completely necessary to get you past any obstacle in life. Remember that it is not the things you are going through that will weigh you down, but how you keep to handle them that will. The Lord knew that his people would question him and that they would need to be strong to survive. Therefore, he promises us strength. In Isaiah chapter 40, the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the people who were under the rest in the midst of being held in Babylon. As they were going through their struggle, they questioned where God was and they had given up hope thinking he had abandoned them. In our time of struggle, we may question where God is and why does he let us go through certain things in life. We serve a God who is patient, so even when you feel you're going through something for a long time, remember that he is with you, he hears you, and he sees you. Waiting serves a purpose, and he never said it would be easy, but he promises he will always be with us. Isaiah reminds him in chapter 40, verse 28, that the Lord is the everlasting God and the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow weary or tired as we do. The entire chapter of Isaiah 40 proves that God can keep his promises made to his people. 
As we grow in this word, we must understand that our human weaknesses are nothing compared to the strength of God. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, the book of Isaiah tells us that the Lord will, strength, will bring strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Isaiah verse, chapter 40, verse 30 reminds us, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. This scripture shows us that even at our youngest and strongest, we are weak in comparison to the power of the Lord's might. Welcome to text. I know that's right. <laughs> As Christians, we may, faint, we may faint and grow weary, but God doesn't. Even those with great health need a source of strength, which comes from the Lord. Isaiah 40 and 31 is a reminder that those who wait on him will have a new strength. There will be trials in your life where you feel like you don't have the strength to overcome the difficulty that you are faced with. Look at Isaiah 40 and 31 and remember the key word is to wait. Put your hope in the Lord and acknowledge his presence in your life and continue to ask for strength that can only come from him. This morning in Sunday school class, Reverend Williams discussed being able to have the correct foundation we need to overcome what we are going through. Growing up in church, I feel I never really appreciated the lessons until I have to go through life. I remember sometimes there would only be three of us at prayer and teachers meeting that were young. It would be me, Tamisha, and Tori I, and we were there, honestly, because our parents were there. But as I have grown in the Word, I realized that having memory verses to recite at the end of prayers and learning these scriptures have helped me through life and shown me the importance of having scriptures to rely on as I go throughout struggles in life. I encourage you to get a few scriptures that remind you of the goodness of the Lord. Look at these scriptures in meditation and prayer when life feels tough. And it feels as if the Lord is not listening to you. Always remember he is, and he will see you through. When we choose to wait on the Lord, we are choosing to rely on him completely. His timing will always be perfect, and so will his will for our life. As we wait on the Lord, he will provide us with renewed strength. Thank you. Christ 